How are you all? I'm happy to be here. God's blessings to you all. And tonight I will actually have a split topic. I have two topics I want to talk about briefly. First, to live in the love of God that we are, that we, you know, um, it's true that we all know that as Christians we live in the law and the grace of God. But so very often it's easy for us to be living under the law. What I mean is like this. Since childhood, we've been taught, if you do this, you're a good boy, you're a good girl, then I love you. And, and then, you know, that a lot of times people say, I'm not as good as the other people. He's better than I am. He do better than I am. And then, uh, even in the church, when we believe in Jesus, does it mean that we all live in, the, live in the grace? You know, very often we'll say, I don't pray enough. Or I have to pray. I have to do this. I have to read the Bible. It's all the law. What to do. What to do. Now, what is the difference when you're living under the grace of God, the love of God? It means that, you know, you know that you're loved by God. Your life is special. Your life is important. That you're treasured by God. And then your life can do a lot for God. That, that, uh, that God has a wonderful plan. He sees each person as important. And then, you know, we are all uh, precious in the sight of God. And then you say, my life is so precious, I don't want, want to waste my life. Now, let me tell you the difference. Like, for instance, you motivate someone to pray. Sometimes you say, do you pray? Have you prayed? Do you want to, sp uh, how much time do you want to spend in praying? You know, do you pray enough? That's the law saying that you should do this. But if it's grace, it will be like this. You know, the, God, the Lord has a lot of blessings waiting for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to pour His blessings upon you. When you pray to Him, you can receive His blessings. So He's saying the grace of God motivates us to follow Him. The motivation comes from the grace of God, not from the law. You know, if it's from the law, then He's saying you have to do this, you have to do that. But when the motivation is from the grace of God, the Lord is... He treasures us, he, we, our life is precious and we can do a lot of things for God and our life is precious and our life can go higher and higher. And then people know this is all these are the teaching of the Bible, that our life is very precious and we can do great things of God. And then we can live with peace and love and freedom to be free in the Lord and to be joyful in the Lord. Instead of saying, you know, sometimes when People live under the law. What happens is they always say, I don't, you know, I'm not good enough. I don't do well enough. I haven't prayed enough. So there can be a lot of guilt feeling. But when we live under the grace, we say, the Lord loves me and forgives me. And I want to use my life. Now, when you have the grace of God, it doesn't mean you don't have the law. You have, we want to have a balance of the grace of God and the law of God. The balance, the balance means we live under the grace of God, the love of God, motivated by the love of God to follow God, to obey God. Now, for myself, I really want to make the best of my life. I really, you know, because I've seen so much God has used me, that uh, God has used me to raise up people's spiritual life, to help them to see how, you know, how precious their life is, and then they can be filled with the Holy Spirit and they can do great things for God. And some people will be so motivated and they, they know their life is precious. When I have this motivation that God loves us and use, He wants to use our life, and then I have the motivation to obey everything. I don't want any sin to stay in my life. Now when people, now let me ask you, if two persons go to church, one person says, I have to do evangelism because if I don't do it, you know, I'm not a good and faithful servant. I have to do this, I have to do this. And then another person says, Well, God loves me so much. I want to love Him more. I want to serve God. I want to bring people to Jesus. I'm so happy of Jesus. Now, these two persons, one is saying, I have to do it because that's the command of God. And the other one says, I want to do it because God loves me so much. I want to respond to His love. And I see that each person is precious in His sight. I can do great things to bless these people. Now, which one you see more of the life of Jesus. The one who is motivated by love or the one who always says, I have to do this, I have to do that. Which one is more motivated? Which one 
you can see more the life of Jesus in him. The one with the grace of God, right? That he he's motivated by the grace of God. That like Jesus when he talks, he did not say, I have to preach to you. He would say, you know, the Father loves you. The Father, you know, wants to deliver you. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, I have been trying to gather you. That from God's perspective, it's God always loving us. When Jesus encouraged us to pray, He didn't say, you have to spend so much time praying. But He said, before you pray, the Lord already knows it. The Lord already knows your needs. And He will answer your prayer. He will bless you. When we know we are loved by God, it's like a child knowing that he or she is loved by the parents, then he'll be very happy to do what the parents tell him to do. Now, of course, there are children who are disobedient. Even when the parents are nice to them, the children might not be obedient. But when people really have the love of God and then they see the law of God is very precious and then they have the motivation to follow God. You know, I'm already 65 years old. And, but I'm still strong, I thank God. And I keep myself healthy. I try to eat as healthy as I can. And I want to spend my life, my time to bless more people. Now many people would retire 65, but for me, I, I, I'm not happy if I retire 65 because the Lord has given me so many good teachings. And if I retire 70, I only have four and a half years. If I retire 80, it's still very short. I want to spend more time blessing people because I see God is so good. When I think of the goodness of God, I say, Lord, you're so wonderful. You're so good. Your goodness is so overwhelming. And you can bless people, change people's life. And when I see the grace of God, I'm always motivated. I was converted in 1970. 7 and then I became a pastor in 1983. And then in 1998, 15 years after I was a pastor, an evangelist laid hand on me, and then I experienced great power like electricity enter me. And then a great love of God entered me and touched my heart so deeply, I cried for a long time. I said, I didn't know I can experience God's love like that. And then I said, I want to stay in that presence. And the second thought is, I want to be like that evangelist, to be able to help many people, to bless many people. And so I spent a lot of time praying, and then I pray for many people, and find that people experience God's presence, and their life is changed. And also for myself, when I cry to Jesus, I, Lord, I say, Lord Jesus, and then immediately I can experience Him. I can experience, at first I experience the power, later I experience the joy, and then later I experience the love. And I really like the love of God. Whenever I think about the love of God, I'm overwhelmed. Lord, you're so good, so wonderful. And then I have a lot of motivation to go to different countries. I go to different countries now to bless people. And I hope you are motivated by God's love. You know how much God loves you. In a few days that I'm here in Pastor Rajan's church and then ministering to some other places, there were different people, they were touched by the love of God. And one person, she shared, shared you know, she was sitting, because the, on Sunday she was, it was not Sunday, I'm sorry, it was another day. And then the place was filled with people and then she was sitting all the way back. And then I asked them, anyone want to come forward? And, and pray, I demonstrate. And then she came all the way from the back. And then she said, when she was sitting there, she was already feeling the power of God. And then when she stood up, she felt the, the love of God. And then she walked forward, she felt the love of God, the power of God all the way. And then she came forward. What I did was, I just loved Jesus and said, Lord Jesus, you love me so much. You love us so much in my heart. I was demonstrating how to pray in the Spirit. I was just <coughs> loving God and staying in the love of God. And she was overwhelmed with the love of God. And then she told me for the few days after that, she was filled with the joy of the Lord, the love of God. And then she was motivated.
to pray to, to God more and to be used by God. And every time she prays, she can experience God's love and peace and joy. It's so very wonderful. So I hope that, you know, like that you'll be changed by God, changed by God's love. It's like someone who goes to heaven. If he has been to heaven, when he comes back, he will tell people, God is very good. Let us serve him. Let us love him. Let us spread his word. But if someone just say, I have to do this, I have to do this, do that, that is under pressure. So I hope you understand the difference. And I will just say briefly some of the verses because I don't have too much time. Some of the verses that talk about the love of God to let us think about it. Isaiah 49, 15, verse 15, to, uh, verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? Now you can just write down the verse. You don't have to uh, turn to the verse. You can just write down and then look it up in, in, at home in the Bible. So it's Isaiah 49, verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. How many of you are mothers here? Can you raise your hand? Okay. Have you forgotten your baby somewhere? Anytime? <laughs> Have you left your baby in a bus? In a train? In a shop? You haven't. Or in a church? <laughs> you were not because you, in your heart your baby is so important. That you remember your baby. That, you know, it's God putting that heart in you. Even in animals, you know, I watch animal uh, uh, on videos on National Geographic. And one time I saw a lioness, the baby was gone, and she was looking for miles. She walked for miles and looked for the baby. And then when she was going, she was going like this, oh, oh, and cry out. I mean, I'm not doing very well, but it sounds like that. <laughs> And she was looking for the baby. And then at that time I saw a lioness, the baby has died. And then when the, the lioness saw the baby die, her dead, is dead, she looked up and she opened her mouth wide and then she made her sound. <sighs> and you can see the sadness in the lioness, in the animal. That God has put this love even in the animal. And as we as human, we really have strong love. You know, this, all this came from God. Because God is full of love. When we understand how much God's love is, you say, it's so wonderful to have such a loving God. You will say, wow, it's so wonderful to be His children. That we are loved by God and we are blessed by God that our life can go higher and higher. Then you say, it's so wonderful to have God. And then you say, I'm so blessed. I'm such a special person because God loves me. And then we'll say, yes, Lord, I want to glorify you. I want to tell people about Jesus. I want to tell people how wonderful God is. So I hope that in your heart, you're really impressed with the love of God. Now, with me, anytime I see anything, I see any people's change, I always think about God's work. Like I share with you, the sister in uh, Pastor Rajan's church. What I saw, not just her manifestation, what I saw is God works in her life. God pours His love into her. The moment she heard the Word of God, her heart was touched. And the love of God was poured upon her because God was blessing her. Actually, God is blessing everyone here too. If you have an open heart, if you respond to God, you say, God, you're so wonderful. He will work in your heart. He will speak to you. He will guide you. And then when you're touched by the love of God, you know, it's actually God touching you inside. God speaking to you. And then when she walked up, she stood up. That courage Open her heart up, and then God pour His Spirit more upon him, her. And then when she came forward, she was overwhelmed by the love of God, and so her heart was very open. But God was working all the way. What I'm saying is, God is working in our life all the days of our life. 
You know, the Bible says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, in this verse, sometimes people just think about the verse, you know, Jesus came to seek and to save. But if you think deeply, what has God done? What has God done to seek and to save us? First, in eternity, God already knew us. God already chose us to be His children. And God has a plan to send Jesus Christ to die for us, to pay for the penalty. Now, this is something very precious. Even though we have heard about the blood of Jesus, Jesus died many times. But we think about how much it did for mankind. How much Jesus' death did for mankind. When He has died for us, our sins are all forgiven. And then we turn from, you know, condemned sinners to become saints. And then we have hope in eternity. We have eternal life. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have the presence of God Himself living in us. And then God has a plan in our life. He will use our life. He will bless our life a whole lifetime and use our life mightily to bless many people. And He will bring many, many people to His kingdom. And He will bless our life with peace and joy and love. With the blood of Jesus, all these blessings come now and forever. So God has this plan. And then, when He has this plan, what did He do? He seek us. He sent His servants to come to speak to us, to guide us. You know, when I look at how I was saved, I can see how God worked in different people's life, motivate them to help me. And God worked it out in such a wonderful time. It's all wonderful. And I'm sure that when you think about your life, you can think about how God has used different people to bless your life. And God spoke to these people to speak to you at the right moment. And God prepared your heart. So in order to seek us, He has used different people. He has worked in your heart. And then sometimes we still rejected Him, but He continued to work patiently. And then the moment you believe in Jesus, you can experience the love of God entering, the peace of God entering you, then you are set free. Then you can feel the freedom. And after that, you start to experience His voice inside you to remind you to come to God, to follow God. So God has been helping us all the way. And also when we sin, you know, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will come to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That's John chapter 16, verse 8. John chapter 16, verse 8. Now, as Christians, we all experience the Holy Spirit speaking to us, telling us about our sin, and telling us about the wonderful work of God. But how many times do Christians reject Him? How many times do we reject Him? When God motivates us not to lie, do we stop lying? When God motivates us to come to worship, do you come to worship with excitement? When people tell us to go to the temple, I'll rejoice. Or, you just sit there. Not much response from the heart. God motivates us to follow Him. To forgive our husband and wife. Those are the hardest people to forgive because you are with them all the time. So you see the problems. Are you responding right away? Or do you say, it's hard, too hard to forgive him or her? You know, many wives say, talking to my husband is like talking to the wall. There's no response. How can I forgive him? Now, there's the fault on both sides. Even when the husband is like a wall, we still can love him. It doesn't mean he's a wall, then I'll become a wall, right? <laughs> so when you love him and care about him, he might change. But as husbands, we want to respond to your wife, to your children. Be nice to them. Make people feel happy. The Holy Spirit moves us that we will really be nice to people. But so very often, we don't respond. But did the Holy Spirit stop moving in our heart? No, He keeps working in our heart. Let me ask you this. If you have a friend, and you say, let's go out to eat. He said, no, I don't want to go with you. Next time you ask him, come, come to my home, it's my birthday party. And then he said, I don't want to see you in your house. 
And then the next time you invite him, please uh, let's go out and uh, you know chat together. He said, I don't want to see you anymore. Now he said that a few times. Do you still want to invite him? It's very hard, right? But so many times he will say to Jesus, Jesus, leave me alone for now. I'm sinning now. Please leave me alone. Give me time. After I sin, I'll ask you to forgive my sins. Many Christians have this thought. They didn't realize how much it makes God unhappy. It grieves the Holy Spirit. But we just do it. But the Holy Spirit, Spirit keep talking to us, keep loving us. Isn't that great love? You don't find someone like that. In Chinese, we have an expression. A person like that, we say we have thick skin on the face. It's like he doesn't feel shameful. Now, I use this in a positive way to describe God. That he did, didn't, doesn't feel shameful when he's rejected so many times from us. But he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He should be respected by all people and loved by all people, but many Christians don't respond to Him, but still He continues to love us. Can you see the great love of His? And He keeps working on people's life. So I hope you live in the love of God every day and say, Lord, it's so wonderful. And then we are motivated by God's love to be changed by God's love. Now you might say, I don't see God's love. Let me tell you five areas you can see God's love. Write that down. First, from nature. You can see the food, the beautiful flowers and trees and the plants and the breeze and the beach and everything and your body. It's all the wonderful creation of God, the nature. And the second, from the Bible. There are many Bible verses that talk about the love of God. And they all are true. And number three, the redemption of Jesus. And number four, when we pray to God or when we praise God, we can experience Him. And then number five, in difficult times, we have experienced His help. Have you experienced His help? You know, three times I was almost hit by a car. And one time I said to Jesus, I didn't know I'm coming to you so soon. I don't know how that car in the last 10 meters could turn away so quickly. You know, because my car was running to a, toward Him and His car is running toward me. And it's at high speed. And I thought we were going to have a crash. But in the last split second, the car turned away. And I said, this is wonderful, Lord. It's so wonderful. And one time I spin on the car, uh, on the freeway, high uh, freeway, because there was some ice on the road and I didn't see at night. And I spin and I pass one lane and go to the third, the partition. And then as soon as I stop, a big truck went by. If I had spin one split second later, I would have been hit by the truck. And I said, God is so wonderful. It's your love, your protection. God is timely that He did things at the right moment. So I hope you too, you will say, God, you're so wonderful. You're so good. I want to respond to your love. And there are different levels of responding to God's love. I hope to remember this. The first is knowing God's love. Many people know God's love. The second is believing God's love. And the third is believe God's love even in difficult times. Now many people when they lose the job, they say, God doesn't love me. When you lose the job, it doesn't come from God. It comes from people. Suffering did not come from God. It came from the world. So, and then the fourth level is experience God's love in prayer or in praise and worship. And number five is to enjoy God's love. Do you enjoy food? Do you enjoy food? Most people do. But do you enjoy praying to God? Do you enjoy His, His presence? Do you consciously say, it's so wonderful, God is working in my life. So I hope you think of God's grace and then you enjoy that. And then the sixth level is be motivated by God's love to say, Lord, I give my life to you. You know, each one of us can do a lot for God. Each one of us can do a lot for God. If you are motivated by God's love, you live in His love and your life can be, you know, can blossom and bless many, many people. And I hope we all live in that love.